this is part of a series of videos working on maps and locations and we've been using the Google APIs for their maps uh, to do different things and get interactive maps now. Again, all the code uh, that I'm creating is up on my GitHub site, github.com forward slash metalx1000. The repository is called Maps and Locations. And if you uh, go there, you can find all the code that we're looking at in this series. Again, all my code is free and open source, but do re realize that we are using not only a service, but some code that is created by somebody else that has restrictions, and always keep that in mind when something's not completely free and open source, that it's going to have limitations, and um, just want to throw that out there. Okay, so here we've created a map, a full screen map here. We centered it on location and we drew two circles here. As you can see, I've got a red circle that's a little translucent with a dark red ring around the outside of it and a blue circle uh, with a darker blue around the edge there. Let's go ahead and look at the code. And again, uh, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist or hopefully in the description, a link to the full playlist. Be sure to check that out. Um, my website is filmsbychris.com. You can also search all my videos there. And um, we're building on stuff here, so hopefully you've watched the previous videos. Again, basic, basic HTML setup here. Only thing we really have in our body is this empty div tag with an ID of map canvas. We have a few variables up here saying our location. And down here we're saying, okay, Google Maps, look at the window, basically the application. Once everything is loaded, then run the initialize function. Same stuff we've already done. Initialize function is here. We're going to create the map by creating some options, the zoom, where it's centered, what type of map it is. Then we're not going to actually create that map object. Same stuff we've done in the last three videos. But now we're going to create two more objects. First, let's create the options for those objects. Those are our circles here. We're going to say, okay, circle options. We're going to say the stroke color, the opacity, the weight, the fill color, and the fill opacity, what map it's going to go to, where it's going to be centered, and its radius. So here we go. The stroke color is the color of the outline, the circle here. Okay, the, the darker outside. And the reason it's darker is because we have the stroke opacity set to eight, or sorry, point eight. One is full, it's it's blue. You know, I, I said blue here, but you can give it other, basically any color you want. Um, I'm saying 0.8, so it's not 100% solid. <laughs> One would be solid. 0.8 is 80% solid. It's, it's somewhat see-through, although it's still fairly dark, you know. Um, if we zoom in on it, maybe you can see. It still looks pretty solid to me. So that's up to you on how you want that to look. But that's why I said that too, and the weight is is um, also has to do with uh, the thickness of the line. So one would be thinner. You can see it's a fairly thick line. You can make it thinner if you want. That's what the weight is. Now the fill color is obviously the fill color, which is the same color, but I set the opacity much lighter, and that's why it looks like a lighter color, and you can actually see through it better. The lower the opacity, the more you can see through that color. What map we're putting it to, where we're centering it, and the radius, this is in uh, meters, is the default, uh, I believe, for Google. Now we're going to say, okay, we're going to say, that's the, the options for the circle. Now we're going to create the circle object, and we're going to say, okay, use the Google Maps script that we imported, create a circle with those options that we just created. Do the same thing again for a second circle. This one's going to be a red outline, same opacity, same stroke weight. Uh, again, the fill is going to be red, but it's a much more opaque. You can see through it. Um, the opacity is much lighter. Which map? Where it's going to be centered? It's centered. I'm using the variable for center here. So the map centering somewhere, and both circles are going to be centered at the same location. But the radius isn't as wide, so it's only going to be 300 meters. So that's why it's smaller than the other one. So from the exact center, we've got 300 meters here and then another uh, 200 meters going out. Uh, so that's basics of drawing a circle there. Now I'm going to show you another quick script here uh, called place circle. Starts off the same. 
We can zoom in here and we can look at the code for that. And it looks the same, but I added a small function and an event listener, just like we were placing markers in the last tutorial, I believe it was. Um, we're going to say when you click on the map, you know, get that location and then move zone. And here it's going to, I create a little loop that loops through all the circles because instead of just creating a circle, I'm actually pushing them to an array. So I can loop through all of them so they're all always centered together. So what this does is, okay, we have the default location where we place those circles, but now I can click and move that circle to other locations. Uh, and practical use for this, you know, there's lots of things you can do, but again, uh, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know my day job is a firefighter, so that's where my mindset is when I'm writing stuff like this. We use, I was going to say we use maps a lot, but really we don't, but really we should. We could utilize maps a lot more, but unfortunately my department does not. Um, but I write a lot of these scripts and post them online in hopes that other fire departments will come to the conclusion that they can download and customize my code for their exact needs. But when you have an incident, especially if it's a hazmat incident, you have a chemical spill of some sort or maybe a propane leak, uh, you want to evacuate a certain area. And there's, there's books that we look up, you know, based on what type of chemical it is. Uh, you know, what the wind is like, how big of a radius you want. And it's not always a perfect circle because it's whether it's downhill or uphill, but we could use circles this to get a general idea. Um, we can say, okay, let's say that right here, this house had a, a truck crash in front of it and there was a chemical spill. Uh, I could click on the circle there and then I could have either boxes, input boxes that I can enter, you know, how many feet or meters in the script can do the calculations that I want my red zone, you would have three zones. You have a hot zone, a warm zone, and a cold zone. Hot zone is you don't want to be in there unless your fully protective gear is on. Warm zone is where you kind of, you're coming in and out. You, you go there to clean off your gear so you can get out, or you, you know, you still want to be protective in there, but that's kind of where you're getting washed up on your way out. And then you have the cold zone, which is anything past that that's, that's safe. So you could have three circles, and you could put in the numbers up there and it would adjust size and you can click where the incident is. So I can click here or there and adjust that accordingly. And you can have an overview because, you know, who goes, oh, oh, it's supposed to be this many yards or meters or miles uh, or kilometers that I'm going to be clearing out. How far is that? You can guess. You can say, oh, these are quarter mile blocks, but it'd be nice to be able to just put in that information, click where the incident is, and be like, okay, we need to move everybody that's inside this red circle out, you know? So that's my thought on real world application for something like this. So this is me starting to work on that, being able to move the circle. The next would be very simply to adjust the sizes, whether it be with a uh, scroll bar, a slider bar, or some sort of input where you type in, or both that coordinate with each other. So those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, I hope that if you did enjoy this tutorial, you like, subscribe, and share this video. I hope that you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. And there you can search through my videos or you can search through them here on YouTube. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. And if I didn't mention, all this code is up on GitHub. My username is metalx1000 and the project's called Maps and Locations. I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember and my wife, Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. 
So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.